Christina, let's give her a warm welcome as she comes to bring her to you. to the body of Christ this morning. I'm going to say a prayer before we get into the yes. Word. Lord, we thank you and we praise yes. you. What a privilege and an opportunity yes. to be in your house Hallelujah. today. As Tanya prayed that before the throne room, Lord. God, it is a privilege, Lord. Help us never to take for granted the church doors to be open, God. It is a blessing and a privilege to be here. And Father, today, Until we get to the other side in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 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 Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the text that I'll be preaching from is from Luke chapter 6, verse 46. And Jesus asked the question. And it starts off and he says, Why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? And I want to look at that just for a minute. Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord? I want to look at that title, Lord. There are three different ways in the scripture, in the word of God, that Jesus is placed as Lord. And one of the ways that we can look at this is it is his title. The Lord Jesus Christ. That is his title. And in Hebrew, that's Adonai, the one that I belong to, my master. Hallelujah. The one that I belong to, my Lord. As we look at this, his title, the Lord Jesus, I want you to think about the Lord Jesus Christ. The New Testament is filled with his title. The Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus in Hebrew, meaning Joshua. The Lord is my salvation, meaning salvation. Christ links Jesus Christ of Nazareth to all the Old yes. Testament prophecies. It links him. So the Lord Jesus Christ as his title. 
Hallelujah. Paul said in Romans 1.1, he said that he was a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, that servant in the, the word in Greek literally means slave. That Paul looked at himself, that he loved God and knew what God had saved him from. That he considered himself a love slave unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. Praise the name of Jesus. And as we go here, we look at his, we look at his, his title. But I want you to think of that word, Lord. He says, why do you call me Lord, Lord? I want you to think of his position as Lord. We saw the title. He is the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to see him today in his position. Philippians chapter 2 verses 10 and 11 says that the name of Jesus, that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. The things in heaven, the things in earth, and the things below, that leaves nothing, nothing. Even the demons and the principalities of darkness, there will be nothing that will not bow their knee before the Lord Jesus Christ. It says that everything in the heavens, everything in the earth, and everything below the earth will bow their knee, and that every tongue will confess. That Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is his position today, church. We've looked at the Lord Jesus Christ. His title is that he is Lord. We see his position that he is Lord over all. And that every tongue will confess. Sinner and saint alike. Hallelujah. We will all confess the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That he is Lord. Yes. And it's to the glory of the Father. Yes. But in this text, this addresses the third aspect of his title. This addresses his relationship. He says, why do you call me Lord, Lord? That means, I, you know, you say that you have a relationship with me. You call me Lord. But you do not the things that I say. Oh, I want to talk to you a minute about the relationship. I want to talk to you a minute about the relationship. Rebecca asked the question this morning. Is he your Lord? You see, I grew up in this church. Sunday school was my foundation. I grew up learning the psalms and the hymns and seeing the power of God move. And I will, I will classify my testimony when they ask me to write my testimony. This is what I tell them. In Luke chapter, chapter 15, verse 8, my testimony goes like this. I was like that coin in the widow's house that she had ten coins and there was one lost. How many know that you can be in the house and still be lost? How many know that you can attend church and still be lost? That your church attendance does not make you a Christian. Your, your church attendance and, and what you do does not make you a Christian. It is based upon the relationship that you have with Jesus Christ. I was in the house, but I was lost. And I'm so glad that Jesus Christ yes, yes, in his love reached down and yes, saved he me. Yes, he did. You see, I understood the concept when I walked down this altar in a revival meeting. Mm -hmm. And I said, God, I'm done. I've had enough of myself. I've had enough of my empty ways. I'm a lonely, miserable mess. And I need you because I can't do it on my own. And God, I realized at that moment in my life at this altar that he saved my soul and he yes. became my Savior. Hallelujah. And I'm so glad today that Jesus, he forgives our sins. Yes, he washes he them away. The devil wants you to think that, that you can't become a God has called you to be because of your past, but he's saying today, let it go. Yes. Let it go. This is a new year. This is a new time. Yes. And let God work the work in your life. Hallelujah.
Yeah, that's uh. right. But I'm so glad that, that he began to show me and challenge me that not only was my Savior, but he wanted to be my Lord. Yes. I had to understand what that meant. What does it mean, God, for you to be Lord? You're my Savior. Oh, it's so easy. We'll all take Jesus as our Savior. Oh, we all want to be saved from our sins. We all want to be delivered. But we don't want him to be Lord. Right. We want Jesus as Savior. We'll take that part. But we're not so sure about Lord. So God began to challenge me that he wanted to be Lord over my relationships. He wanted to be Lord over my finances. He wanted to be Lord over the entertainment that I allowed myself to partake in. He wanted to be Lord over my time with the way I invested it or spent it. Hallelujah. He wanted to be Lord in my conversations. You know, if we're gonna if we're gonna call ourselves Christians, he's not only the Savior, but we've got to make him Lord of our life. Yes. He is calling on us to a deeper commitment yes. with him. He is calling us to holy relationships. He is calling us to be obedient in our finances. Yes. He's calling us to watch our eyes in our time and our entertainment. You know, Job, in his affliction, he told his friends, he says, I made a covenant with my eyes that I will not look upon a woman in a lustful way. Oh, church, how many know we need to make a covenant? We need to make a covenant. I don't like to watch adultery and fornication on the, on the, on the cable TV. It bothers me in my spirit. I don't like to watch murder and hatred on the TV shows. Yeah, Hallelujah. God said, Christina, I want to be Lord. It's time that you make me Lord. Lord over every area yes. of your life. Lord, yes. I want to be Lord in your life. That's right. I want to be Lord. What did that mean? What does that mean to us today? That means willing to walk the ways of God over our own preferences. That's right. Come on, church. Right. We're stuck in a rut. We like what we like. Don't mess with our, our comfort zone. But God is saying, He said, Am I your Lord today? You want to call me Savior, but I'm not just your Savior, but I'm calling you to make me Lord. I'm calling you to make me Lord of your life. I'm calling you to make me Lord. So it's God's ways over our preferences. Hallelujah. It's His ways. So I look at this relationship this this refers jesus is talking about a relationship he says why do you call me lord lord and do not those things which i say you know what he's saying church he says why are you giving me lip service why do you come to church to give me lip service and then you walk out those doors and I'm calling you to read your Bible. I'm calling you to church. I'm calling you to prayer meeting. I'm calling you yes. to stand up and witness and to testify. Yes. And you do not the things that I say. Hallelujah. He says it's lip service. He says, why? Why do you call me Lord, Lord? You give me lip service. But I want your heart. Amen. Oh, so tell Praise the name of Jesus. Why don't we obey Jesus? Why? Because we put it off. We think that it's not really that important what he's asking us to do. We're lazy too. We're lazy. I talked to a man at the gas station. He was literally smoking a cigarette as he was pumping gas. And I said, excuse me, sir. You know, I'm standing at the pump right beside him. I said, but you have a cigarette and it's burning. And I said, do you mind putting that out? 
So <laughs> he said, I'm sorry. He goes, I didn't even know it was lit. And so God used that for an opportunity for me to witness to him. And I began to tell him about Jesus. And I asked him, I said, do you know Jesus? He said, I believe in God, but I don't know about that Jesus stuff. He said, I believe in the aliens, and, and I believe in this and that and the other. And, and I looked at him and I said, there are a million different opinions and views and ways that people think they're right. I said, but I want to tell you something. That if you're really searching for truth, the God of all truth will reveal himself to you. But I said, let me give you a warning that you've got to be willing to be truthful to yourself. I said, if you want the truth, the God of all truth will reveal himself to you. Yes. But you have to be willing to accept truth in your life. And I said, the word of God says that men love darkness right. more than light. Right. Why? Because their deeds are evil. And, and, and we just, I began to share, I said, we're comfortable in our sin. That's why men love darkness more than light because they're comfortable in their sin and I said if you really want to know the truth the God of all truth will show himself to you but it may require change come on church sure. hallelujah it may require us to change praise the name of Jesus I want you to look at verse 47 he says why, why call me, why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Verse 47, whosoever cometh to me, heareth my saints, and doeth them, I will show him, I will show you to him what he is like. I want you to look at that just for a second. You've got to come, That's you've got to hear, and you've got to do. Come on, church. The Bible said, Jesus said that whosoever comes to me, hallelujah, and hears my saying. Come on, we're talking about the word of God here. Whosoever will come. You are not here today because you brought yourself. You are here today because the spirit of God put it in you to be in church today. Hallelujah. That's why you're here. And the word of God. Jesus said that whosoever will come That's right. and hear my sayings. The word has already gone forth today. The word has already been preached today. This is round two is how I feel. The word has already been given. He says, will you hear my sayings? Oh, yeah. We all can hear. But this is where the catch is. Hallelujah. And do them. And do them. Hallelujah. Be doers of the word and not hearers only. Deceiving your own selves. When you sat in the pew and you hear the word of God being brought forth Sunday after Sunday and Wednesday after Wednesday, and it doesn't change you, you're deceiving yourself. Right. You're not a doer of the word. Because my Bible says that the word of God will change us. Hallelujah. Right. The word of God will cleanse us. Hallelujah. So we sit here Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday after Wednesday, untouched. Only to come in the same week with the same issues, the same hang-ups, the same hurts, the, the, the same stuff that we've been battling. And God says, I want to set you free. But the very thing that will set us free, we neglect the word of God. Hallelujah. We are neglectful to the word. It is the, it's what cares for our soul. It is what sets us free. The word of God, the word of God, the word of God. But yet we let it lay. We let it lay. Hallelujah. So today, 
The Bible says Jesus said, come here and do. And when you do that, I'll tell you what you will be like. Hallelujah. It says, he will be like a man that builds his house. Oh, hallelujah. I want you to look at the next, the next words there. And dig deep. Come on, church. Yeah. Somebody needs to dig deep yeah. into the word of God. Yeah. It is the foundation that we stand on today. Yes. You know, we've got so many people that have a form, that have a have to talk, but their roots, their foundation is not strong. That's right. Hallelujah. Jesus says the doer of the word. The doer of the word. Not the one that just shows up. I'm not talking about the ones that show up. I'm not talking about the ones that listen. I'm talking about the doers today. Come on, church. God's yes. looking for doers of the yes. word today. He says in 2017, come on, he's looking for his church to be obedient. He wants to be your Lord and he wants yes. you to walk in his ways. And this is what he said. He said, you do my sayings. You will be like the house that was built. And the first thing he says is, is that you dig deep. Oh, hallelujah. Our foundations need to be deep. Our foundation needs to be That's laid. Right. We got to dig. We got to dig. That's Are you right. ready to dig today? So it doesn't mean that, that God, he's looking for us to be inconvenienced. To dig deep. Hallelujah. I'm talking to moms and dads today. You're laying a foundation for your children. You are laying a foundation for your children. Dig deep. They can't dig it right now. Hallelujah. Dig deep in the name of Jesus. I'm talking to husbands and wives today. Dig deep your foundation in your marriage today. In Jesus' name. Oh, God. God wants to do a work. Yes. But we are still, as Paul said, some of us, this is spiritual growth. Digging deep requires growth. It requires a diligent, intentional effort to get close to God. I prayed with yesterday. Numerous of them had the same prayer request. They want to be closer to God in 2017. They want, they want the presence of God to be in their life. God has not changed. God is wanting to pour out His Spirit. We've got to make room in our agendas. We've got to make room on our calendars for Him. We are too busy for the move of God. You see, the change isn't with God. It's with us. God is wanting us to draw closer to Him. I, I, I am speaking today to dig deep. Paul said to the Corinthian church, he said, I would love. He said, brethren, I could not speak unto you spiritual, but as carnal, even as unto babes. I have fed you with milk and not meat. For hitherto you were not able to bear it, and neither are you able to bear it now, for ye are yet carnal. You know, I have enjoyed every stage of my kids' growth, from, the, from infancy all the way through. It has been a joy, and it has been an honor to raise Jesse and Elizabeth. And I'll tell you, that if Jesse or Elizabeth was still in the crib today, there would be something wrong, wouldn't there? Right. My son's 20 years old and my daughter is 16 years old. If they were still in the crib right. and didn't develop, there would be something wrong. And we would be concerned. Why is it okay God's children can be saved for 5 and 10 and 15 years and That's still right. be like a babe in Christ? And it'd be okay. That's right. God is saying dig deep yes. and grow up. Yes. He does not. He's looking for warriors. Oh, he's right. looking for warriors that's to go right. forth on the battlefields because sin is ugly. Hell is real. Yes. But God has the solution and it's Jesus yes. Christ. Oh, Hallelujah. Oh, but if we're a babe, we can't get on the meat. We can't pass on something that we don't have. It would be odd that Jesse 
Queen Elizabeth would still be in the crib at 20 years old. And God is looking at us. And he's, he's wanting growth. Green and growing. He's wanting us to become healthy before him. And, you know, the word, you know, I believe that the only way to grow is by moving forward. Because even being stagnant is still going backwards. We've got to be, oh, we go to the doctors and, and measure little Johnny's head. And we weigh him. Everything, the vitamins and the shots, everything's got to be good. Oh, we want Johnny to just make sure that it's all, you know, developing properly. Why we neglect the spiritual growth of our life. And we remain in infancy and yet carnal to the deeper things of God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm just going to, I'm not going to get through this whole thing. But it says that they dug deep. They dug deep and they laid the foundation. Come on, church, 2017. I know that every one of you have a testimony. That God, you called upon the name of the Lord and he heard you. I know that you have a testimony that God in his grace and his mercy came through at a time when no one else could. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 That's your foundation. Run with it. Build on it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Because the word of God says, look at the very next verse. This is so important. It says that they laid the foundation on the rock. Oh, Jesus. Come on, the rock is Jesus. And when the floods rose, that doesn't, the word of God didn't say, well, if they come, or, you know, they may come. It says, and when the storms came. Hallelujah. We are going to face storms in this life. God says clearly here, but if you are on a firm foundation, you've dug deep, and the word of God is what you're standing on today, that when the storms come, you will not be moved because you are on the solid ground, the firm foundation of yes. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Where does that start? That starts by being faithful to you know what God has already called you to do. If you know he's stirring your heart for more prayer, then you are responsible before an almighty God to adjust the schedule. If he's calling you to Sunday school, I'm here to tell you there is no excuse for not showing up Amen. in Sunday school. Oh, we want more of God, but we don't show up. We don't show up. Come on, church. Hallelujah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end with this. Praise the name of Jesus. 2017. God. I've, I've heard Rebecca speak. I've heard Shannon speak. God wants to do great things in 2017. I believe that he wants to start today. Yes. I believe that he wants to start today at the altars. He wants to do something in your life that you can't do for yourself. That's right. Are you willing to come? It takes a truthful, <coughs> it takes a truthful heart right. to admit to oneself where we're at before the Lord. I'm going to end with the question that Rebecca started the service with. Is Jesus your Lord? Yes. We call him Savior. Right. And we all say, yeah, I'm saved. But have you made him Lord? Yes. Hallelujah. So Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. We don't want to forget the opportunity or take it away this morning. Hallelujah. And do you know him as your Lord? Is there someone here this morning that you'd say? He's my Savior. He came to save us. 
But we've got to make him Lord Hallelujah. of our lives this morning. Is there someone here you say, I don't know him as Lord and Savior. We're going to get ready to take communion. We want to make sure that you have him in your heart, in your life. Yes. As we take of the table of the Lord, we want to make Praise sure that Jesus. our lives are clean. There is no sin because we are taking him. We are taking part of Him into our lives as we remember what Christ has done on this wonderful New Year's Day. We are going to take of the table of the Lord. Hallelujah. And I want us to reach out to the Lord. And I want us to seek the Lord that you would say, ask the question. Even as we as the church, we need to ask the question, is He your Lord? Have you committed, Hallelujah. have you taken the time to spend with your Hallelujah. Lord and Savior? Hallelujah. Are you doing what He has called you to do? Are you in that place where God wants you to be? I believe if we answer it honestly, that we need Him even more. Yes. And we Hallelujah. need Him to be Lord Praise even Lord. more in 2017. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That we would seek the Lord. We're going to take of the Lord's table. Hallelujah. And I want you just to prepare your heart. I'm going to sing a, a song. And I just want you as we come into the presence of the Lord and into His whole... This is a holy time as we take of the Lord. We want to make sure that your lives are clean. And we're going to say a prayer right now. That you would just re repeat this prayer after me. Say, yes. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus forgive, me forgive me of my sins. Of my sins. Wash me Wash in the precious blood. I need you, Jesus, in my life. Help me, Lord Jesus, to make you Lord in my life in 2017. Lord, as we take of the cup and of the bread that represents your body and represents your blood. Lord, we want to remember what you have done for us that we might be saved, that we might be delivered. Lord Jesus, help me to walk in your way. And Lord Jesus, help me Help me. To make you Lord, to make you Lord in my life, in, my life. in Jesus' name, in Jesus name. Amen. amen. Everything good, everything bright, everything holy, everything right, everything worthy, all that.